Hi guys, how's it going? This is Resin of Color for YouTube. Here to continue my reaction reviews for Dark Shadows episodes. This is episode 79. <clears throat> we see the Great House, obviously. And we get the voiceover from lovely, lovely Alexander. Oh, I see. Her voiceover is about the coroner's uh, report. This is obviously the following day, so we're so we're literally on the next day, and there's Berto. This is not the same day; it cannot be. And there's Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> she insults Mr. Wells. So Burke advises Mrs. Johnson to soft pedal her feelings. She goes, how can I? He reminds her, if anyone found out how you really felt about it, they wouldn't want you to come to work at Collinwood. And she goes, uh, okay. And Roger, or sorry, Bert lays out his two goals to uh, own Collinwood and everything it represents. And Dale Malloy's death. Where do you find out who it is? <laughs> right. It's the guy that tried to kill you, Bert. It's Matthew Morgan. So Miss Johnson says so she'll she hopes she'll be able to help her. There, by the way, they're in Burke's hotel room. Did that couch get smaller? Is it the way they just shot that? So, so Mrs. Johnson, there are three people who know the truth: me, you, and the person that killed killed Bill Moore. Know the truth about Bill Moore. So now Burke knows that Roger and Sam met at the Blue Whale. Burke, Burke sees through the date, which is really smart. Oh. So Burke asks uh, Mr. Johnson, "How did Roger? How did Bill Moy feel about Roger moving back to Collin? And Bill did not like it." That's what that's what Mr. Johnson says. So Burke asks uh, Mr. Johnson, did Bill Molloy ever say why he thought Sam would go on the seat and meeting to get drunk? And there is Sam at the coffee shop. Where his daughter is standing behind him. We're coffee, pop. Yes! I drank a whole pot this morning of coffee. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't judge. Don't judge. Ooh. Coffee. What? Two. <laughs> So they're talking about the coroner. They're talking about Bill Malloy's death. Again, great job. 
how do you keep a dead how do you keep a dead man interesting uh, you keep talking about him so now Maggie's asking about the meeting with Roger Collins it didn't have anything to do with his worries she said he says no <laughs> um, and Sam snaps at his daughter says none of your business no I didn't mean that great job by David Ford and great job by Kathleen Lee Scott with the facial feature with the cell job of he just snapped and he's like what's it's sort of like a what's wrong dad I can't like you did again I'll leave a link to this episode it's really, really criminally good. Yeah, they're already in commercial break here. So, already you have Burke and Mrs. Johnson talking in his hotel room. You have Maggie Evans and Sam Evans down in the hotel, in the restaurant. So, it's a real risk if they see Mrs. Johnson coming out of Burke's room. Now, we're back in Burke's room. You've, we've already, now we've heard from Burke. I want to believe that we can prove Rogers the murderer. So Burke's talking about working. So Sarah Johnson talks about how 18 years ago they fired all the staff except for Matthew. So Sarah Johnson saying Vicky's hire isn't all that strange. That's interesting. Think about this episode. And even she said she'll do her best to find out why, you know, Vicky was really hired, even though she feels it's not all that strange, considering the history of of what Elizabeth of Elizabeth Fire and the entire staff. Because Mrs. Johnson says, if she felt that boy, meaning David, needed help, she would go and get it. She would find somebody to help David, but she did. Johnson says, I'll hate you in public. And she does hate him in public, too. Straight up. <laughs> she just puts on the best cell job ever. And it's Mr. Blair calling uh, Burke. But they can already connect Blair. Elizabeth can. <laughs> Bird's got plans to buy that car in with us. And Sam's reading the paper. <laughs> so I just found out in this episode Sam does not pay for his breakfast. 
Maggie doesn't make it pay for his breakfast. What a gal. <laughs> she, she tells him, if you don't start talking to me, I'm going to make her pay for your breakfast. And there's Mrs. Johnson. Walking in. Mrs. Johnson ordered vegetable juice, coffee, and whole wheat toast. She said she'd butter it herself. She already, she already knows about it, but she'd probably tell that she didn't know. Maggie, I don't trust her. I love Maggie to death here. This is so good. <laughs> you see me her? Coming in the room. What's up, Cuffer? Sit. Gently possible more. Burks is maybe right, but I don't think so. Nobody have Mr. Johnson, something, but he did have something to do with it. it was Burke Devlin. So she says, if you haven't come back to Collinsport, Mr. Moore would be alive. This is a great, great acting job by both Mitchell Ryan and Mrs. Johnson and Clarice Blackburn. And David Collins is walking in. David was like at a hitter and he stops him. <laughs> David tells where he came looking for him. Talk about something. And David says he's sick away only playing a thing on both. Like to kill them all. Jesus Christ. Oh. You know, even Michael Myers wasn't this verbally blunt. He was never this verbally blunt. But David Collins, completely different story. <laughs> oh my god. I want to kill them all. Just wow, right? Great, great job of David Hennessy. Great, great acting job. Like, if you're looking for shock value, a kid saying, I want to kill them all is perfect. <laughs> it certainly is. It's like, why? Why would you say that? Mrs. Johnson does talk about how Mr. Moy, uh, Knew that shortcut, like the back of his hand, the shortcut to the to the lookout point. And uh, Bert takes David up to uh, yeah, Bert takes David to his hotel room. Bert's searching for people in his room. The Zudo who went in there, right? He could have been Carolyn. I know. Yeah, I say what's on his mind. 
Is it true? If I take Colin away from I am old. Who told you that? That's what she said. So he says that they would not how he suggests that he buy it. Dave says they say I can't have the Violet Lord who's Burke says who are they? He says Elizabeth and Matthew. The verses have out of church. I don't want to fight you, you know, fight me. <laughs> he tells Bert we're gonna hire Mr. Jones to be his jailer. Let's talk about Mrs. Johnson. Basically he tells him you shouldn't you shouldn't you know, hate her because she's mad at him. <laughs> She's just upset. That's what he's going to tell her. Yeah, she, well, she is upset. That's true. <laughs> I really, really enjoy the hell out of the conversations between Mr. Johnson and Burke. Because Mr. Johnson points out the whole of some very interesting things. Like, like I said, she's not shocked. The ads go on fast, so I won't try to break down stuff here too much. I'll wait till this episode ends. Because there's a lot of lot to break down here too. By the way, David did give the picture back to Burke. Well, he didn't hand it to him, he put it on the desk. Burke's telling me First Sunday, Miss Johnson didn't mean a word she said. She's just upset. Like I said, she's upset. <laughs> like I said, he would say. And Burke brings up the fact that she acts like she has nothing to look forward to anymore. Burke says to David, it's a big house. This your aunt needs all the help she can get, basically. <laughs> so you're not thinking it through. David says about the picture to Burke.
Burks is a bone. See you. And <laughs> gives the picture back, basically. Like, it's already yours. Yeah, unlock the door. There's Mrs. Joseph. It's Joseph's bird devil and they're upset and five people. Live and let live, Sam says. Sam, to me, I want you to watch your banners with her. He's made it, Mrs. Johnson. She's all right. I have to make a phone call. And she stopped before she finished that. So she's going to ask him who you're going to call. There. <laughs> First day. <laughs> Perfect with flame on the mouth of them. This is Johnson. So, <clears throat> Mrs. John, when Mrs. Johnson and Burke were talking, Burke explained what he knew about Victoria Lynch's history, how she was an orphan uh, from a founding home, and Elizabeth had hired her to come to her, a girl she'd never heard of. Don't you find that odd? You know, it isn't that odd, is what Burke's bringing that up to. Sean, Mr. Johnson says, no, not really. And you want to talk about one of the most shocking moments that in DS, what you really need to look at is this episode, too. Because that right there, you know Mrs. Johnson doesn't really care for the Collins family. But she's not going to tell lies about him in a sense. Like, okay, to her, it might be shocking to Bert. When you get into different character interactions and different character reactions of other characters, Mrs. Johnson's is going to be different than Burke's a bit. Because Mrs. Johnson knows of th knows things as well. The reason it's not shocking to Mrs. Johnson is because Mrs. Johnson know, and Burke knew this. I, I think, think Burke somewhat knew this. Mrs. Johnson knows that when Paul Stoddard left, Elizabeth fired all all the housekeepers, all the all the butlers, all the limo drivers. The only person she kept on was Matthew Morgan. <clears throat> And then when Roger moved in, you learned that Bill Molloy didn't really care for Roger moving back home. But you also learned that, and this is right out of Sarah Johnson's own mouth, that, hey, if, if Elizabeth felt that young boy, meaning David, needed help, she would go and get it. So to her, to Mrs. Johnson, it's not shocking that so much Vicky brought a woman she didn't know to help David. Big, you know, Elizabeth would bring anybody who she thought could help Dave. But to Burke, it's strange, but that, and Mr. Johnson says, well, I'll try to find out what I can about her. 
you know, and, you know, and Rook says, okay, it's, so there's a lot of things that is on Mrs. Johnson pl Johnson's plate once she goes into Collinwood. You also find out that in this episode, <clears throat> Maggie does not try, you know, you learned in the previous episode, Maggie doesn't really like Sarah Johnson, or she doesn't trust her, and then she warms up to her by the end. Because her dad's like, you're being a little hard, like, don't be so hard on her. She just lost somebody she knew. And Sam's a good dude. <laughs> he's trying to, like, that's, you know, don't be upset with somebody, just because you might not like her. <laughs> sure. You also know that Mr. Johnson to Holbert, I will hate you in public if I helps. And she does. David catches this. Almost uh, slugs her. Burke explains to David the situation. Hey, that, she's upset. Um, and David does apologize to Mr. Johnson. And though David gave the picture back, Burke said it was yours anyway. <clears throat> Great. In great, great job. All right, guys, I'll see you here in a little bit.